JR had asked me to um, bring a, uh, one of my paintings. And so um, originally I was going to bring my Mary Magdalene. And then um, the way, here, I'll move the chair a little bit. And um, the more I started doing um, and writing what I was going to talk about, our, our art whether it's writing or dance or song, whatever it is, it, it speaks to us. And so um, this is called Sacred Garden. And um, I painted it a long time ago. And I had had a, um, I had done a meditation and I hadn't been painting very long. I used to paint a lot in my head because it was safe in my head. Right? It's perfect, and <laughs> you get it out, and it's like, oh. So, um, so I had this vision when I meditated of this beautiful garden, and I was so moved by how I felt from being in that garden. So I, I felt I, I had to paint it. And so one of the things that I do is I'll look for different images in places that I can kind of piece together and, and create my own thing. So um, when I first started painting, I'd feel so much stress and have so much fear around not being good enough or doing it wrong and all that failing stuff, right, that um, I felt really stuck. So I made the decision to um, take a class. So I went to a class at local um, junior college, and it was a six-week class. And by the third week, I, I was dancing through this process of um, paralysis and, <laughs> and stress, and then a little bit of painting, and then more stress. And, and so finally, um, the teacher came up to me, and she said, um, Joan, you are really in over your head. I think you need to pick something else to paint. And so um, it was instantaneous. What I realized was that she did me a great favor. Because throughout our lives, we have things like that happen, and we either prove them right or we prove them wrong. And something triggered in me that um, I wasn't supposed to be in the class anymore. So I quit the class, went home, and it took me a while, but I finished the painting myself. And um, it was my first painting that I started, um, Spirit guided me to create what I called multi-sensory art. And um, what my theory is, is that the more we engage all of our senses, that the more that expands us to embrace our sixth sense, which um, can speak to us on all five senses, that it, it has a voice in all different ways. And so um, the painting for me is visual. And then um, sometimes I'll hear words or a poem, and that's the auditory part. And then I um, made an essential oil blend and um, that evokes, um, it not only has healing properties, but it'll evoke emotion or um, a sense of um, well-being. So the, the blend that I had created for Sacred Garden had um, sandalwood, orange blossom. I had to look it up because it had been so long ago. So um, it was sandalwood, orange blossom, cedarwood, cinnamon, and rose. And this combination has a lot of um, properties where when they come together that it creates a sense of well-being and it also um, has a comforting and, and uplifting effect, but a grounding effect as well. So um, this painting became kind of a signature piece for me and it was, it's been on my business card for years. And it also got me fascinated with um, our energy system, the energy body, the chakras, and um, 
I called that inner world our sacred garden. Um, what I found was I had opportunities to speak about it, and I'm really grateful for that, but I never like, got it off the ground. It never really seemed to come to fru full fruition. So I kind of let it go by the side. But um, my multi-sense, I still did art, but, um, and I, have, I still have my pieces that I have the multi-sensory art with, but um, they kind of went by the side, and I just continued doing life and moving forward. Now, um, a lot of time passed since then, almost two decades. <laughs> but last week, I went to see Gary Zukoff in um, Folsom. And he shared how we are multisensory beings. And my ears perked up. <laughs> and um, what his take on it is that the more we engage our senses, the more it allows us to live a more full and courageous life. I love that. So um, I hadn't heard that word in a long time, and that, that really stirred me um, with this talk. So it brought me back to um, my previous mission from um, all that time ago and what I had perceived at that time as failure was worth revisiting and just appreciating, you know? And um, so I pulled it out and brought it together and um, Susan is going to hand out little strips of um, the essential oil for you to smell. And um, working in hospice, one of the greatest things that I found was that um, as a culture, we wait until people die to say, rest in peace. And I've become very grounded in the fact that I believe it is a basic human right to rest in peace, that that's the core of our being. And I, I feel culturally we're knocked off that at every opportunity we get bombarded. So um, what I'd like you to do um, is you can put it in the tips of like your middle fingers and bring your hands into prayer. And you can rest your thumb line into the center of your chest. It's your sea of tranquility. So it's an acupressure point that helps balance and calm your seas inside. And as you bring your, your head down, you can kind of loosen your neck and shoulders. And as you take a slow, full, and deep breath, inhale. And slowly lift your head. And on your exhale, you can just loosen your jaw and allow your exhale to come out your mouth. Ah. Good. And just keep doing that. And I'm going to um, read the words that came to me when I painted this. And I um, invite you to Allow your heart to receive it. Our hearts are contained within a seed that our lives break open. We learn that the shell falls away and is what we must leave behind. For we are the gardener, we are the seed, and we are the garden that resides inside cultivating, blossoming, and maturing, bearing the fruits of our heart's wisdom. We nourish ourselves as well as others. Love is the way, and fearless love is the path. We have discovered our internal, eternal Eden. We are this tree of life. We are home. We become the vibration of OM within our sacred garden. We fill with the knowing that the universe resides within us. We become this breath of peace. Ah. <sighs> ah. <sighs> Stay.
still breathing deeply. You can allow your eyes to stay closed or open them, whatever feels most comfortable for you. But feel your being opening and expanding your heart's love, peace, and compassion. Let it flow through and down your body, down your legs, into the earth, filling your hearts and radiating through your arms and hands and sharing with those around you as well as receiving this love from those around you. Feel this, fill the room, expanding throughout our city, our state, our country. Let it touch our whole global family simultaneously, breathing, giving, and receiving peace. Notice how those who may be suffering or struggling may also receive this peace and their pain may begin to subside. Feel how we are each becoming an ever greater part of this experience, a more and more powerful collective universal breath of peace. Now, wouldn't that be a mission accomplished? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.